Hello everybody, this is Dr. Ali Mugabel. In this video, we'll be covering statistical multipath channel models. Statistical multipath channel models. So, the outline of what we would like to be covering is following uh, Andrew Goldsmith book, chapter 3 from the draft version. And basically, I'd like you to read the following suggested reading. You can pause and find the details here. Uh, we will start by a quick introduction. We'll get an idea about the time varying channel impulse response. So far, we did not discuss the time variation in this chapter. We'll do. We'll divide the models into two main parts narrow band fading and wide band fading. Narrow band fading and wide band fading. The chapter also covers discrete time models and MIMO channel models. So let's start with the introduction and then we'll take it into narrow and wide band models. Before I proceed, the major objective in this chapter or this part is to is that you should be able to distinguish between wide band and narrow band communication. Drive Doppler shift due to mobility, GX models. Define what resolvable paths are. Express the general formula for time varying channels. Identify Rayleigh and Lacian fadings. Define the autocorrelation and PSD of wide sense stationary fading process. Describe the difference between delay spread, coherence time, doubler spread, and coherence bandwidth. Narrow band and wide band communication, slow fading and fast fading. After these new terminologies, I'd like you to be able to com compute the 2D autocorrelation function for wide sense stationary process with uncorrelated scattering. We'll look at how we quantify uh, from uh, the 2D autocorrelation function and its various transforms and design uh, a, com and, uh, a communication system that satisfies B and C. So quantify the delay spirit and other from the 2D correlation function. And we'll use B and C to design a communication system to satisfy these conditions. So by the end of this module, I would like you to go back to these objectives and take them to check where we have achieved the objective or otherwise. This is a quick summary of where we are so far. We have looked at the received system or received signal as the transmitted signal. And then will be path loss, which we have considered. And there will be shadowing. Path loss it is deterministic. And we would use the, the, the path loss exponent model. We looked at shadowing and we defined shadowing. Uh, we model shadowing as a random process with log down distribution. And now we are here. We're looking at multipath impact. We'd like to model the multipath fading due to mobility, reflections, and uh, and, uh, uh, and and mobility and reflection. I would like to model that that random process. So we are here. Would like to add an additional loss into the the link budget equation. Multipath fading. Let me remind you that multipath results as uh, many paths add up incoherently. So they, uh, they could add up constructively or destructively. We can think of a scenario, simple scenario, where we have static channels. So the receiver and the transmitter are not moving or the channel is not moving. So the channel would be static. There will be multipath, there will be fading effect, but it's going to be static. Alternatively, we could have a dynamic environment where things change, transmitter, receiver, or even the channel in between. And in that case, the response of the channel would be time varying. An example of uh, the multipath, let's say that we have a transmitter here and the receiver is here. There is a main reflection due to this building. So there's a line of sight and the reflection. As this guy travels in this direction, there will be one path, second path. But the relative distance between the two is shifting, is changing with time. So at some time, they will be adding constructively or destructively. This is like the two-ray tracing model, the two-ray model. So one classification, we have static channels versus dynamic ch channels. 
Now, another way we can classify the multipath received. If you have wide band channel, then you will be able to see all the multipath components because wide band frequency results in high time resolution. But in many cases, what we have is narrow band communication where we have limited bandwidth, which result in limited uh, time resolution. So the time would be wider. And what you receive is the collection of multi all paths and the power instead of being the impulse response instead of being uh, an impulse or a certain time here, we'll get it as spread over time. So in narrow band channels, we'll not be able to see the individual multi path due to ceiling floor. We'll see it as one lump sum time spread impact. Now in the example on the right, just to to illustrate more the multi path and its time variability. So we have tie T is the time of uh, transmission. And then we have tau is the relative delay. So at T node, at, at the first time of transmission, we sent a pulse. What we received is three pulses. And with varying amplitudes, varying delays. Because it, uh, the channel is time varying, if you send the same pulse, same data, same information at different time, you expect the received signal to be different. Different in terms of number of multipath, their amplitude, and their relative delay. So at T0 plus alpha, T0 plus beta, T0 plus gamma. You can see every time we get um, different time response. So this is an example of the response of time variant multipath channel to a very to very narrow pulse. Remember that if we have narrow band, then the, we will not be able to distinguish these pulses and they will look at one big pulse. As we have wide band, we can see the resolution and the details of the pulses. Mobility and time varying channels. Uh, earlier we looked at uh, Doppler effect, and this is just to recall that if you have a, a transmitter receiver, they're moving relative to the transmitter, whether away or towards, we'll get Doppler. So the frequency of the transmitter will be received as frequency plus the Doppler, and we know how to, re to relate to, to the wavelength and the velocity and the angle. So as we go towards, it becomes positive, and as we go away, it becomes negative. We had some examples. Uh, if a car is moving at one gigahertz with speeds of 75 km per hour, then you can substitute and get the worst case doubler, which is V over lambda to be 70 hertz. Now, mobility does not just cause change on frequency. We, we get, which is more important now, is the time varying channel. So I'm showing you here that a car moving towards the transmitter at one time it was here at another time it's here so lots of things changes the time delay the phase and the amplitude factor so we can say that in general at as the the the, the transmitter receiver or the channel changes we we expect to get different response so this is the times in second and here is the uh, absolute amplitude of uh, of the received signal or the received, received signal strength so you can see that we have one response and at another time, we have a different response. There are some similarities, some differences, but uh, these differences are caused by the, the time varying nature of the channel. The statistical nature of, uh, or the random nature of the multipath is quite clear. So uh, we have random number of multipath components, and each of them, each of the multipath component will have a random amplitude or random, uh, random attenuation, if you like, random phase, random doubler shift, and random delay. And if your channel is narrow band, we'll have different spread, the time spread or dispersion, which means that I have a certain width, but the received signal will spread on time. This spread is also uh, another, another problem. Due to all this randomness, uh, and time varying nature of the channel, we need to characterize this channel using statistical techniques. So the title statistical multipath models. Now the response of the time, the response of the channel at time t, remember notes here we'll be using t to represent time and tau to represent the, the relative delay. So 
the response of the channel at t to an impulse delayed or shifted to t minus t naught or minus tau where tau is the delay is given by the following response so c is the impulse of response of the channel it's function of two things when did you check the channel because it's time varying and also how much is is the delay of of this multipath component this part represents the amplitude alpha it's time varying this guy also represents the phase delay the angle and of course we have uh, assuming that that the channel is wide band will have delta here and whatever you put at the end but will be correlated with delta and it becomes itself now the summation is for all the, the number of multipath components which is also time varying from 0 to n where capital n is the number of multipath components so t is a time when the impulse is observed t minus tau is a time when the impulse put into the channel tau is how long ago impulse was put into the channel it's a delay for the channel from from the current observation note that path delay for multipath components and we'll be using mp to stand for multipath uh, we have uh, tau is the path delay for that multipath component okay so we'll use these variables to model the channel which is given as c as a first character of channel Our roadmap, why are we doing this modeling? First, we need to know how things work, so we'll do statistical modeling. Then we'll be using this model to understand the performance evaluation. Those model will help us to see how much penalization in the signal-to-noise ratio as a result of the of, of multipath. And once we know how much we lost, we can find mitigation techniques through efficient modulation, coding, and other possible mitigation techniques. So we need to know we need to evaluate and then we need to come up with solutions.